Hello students, today the topic that we're going to do is something that is very close to my heart. The topic is entrepreneurship. Yes, entrepreneurship concepts and functions. So we are going to discuss about what is entrepreneurship. I believe you would have heard this word somewhere, isn't it? To start with, let us look at the learning objectives for the day. The learning objectives of today's topic are to understand the concept of entrepreneurship, to know about the qualities of an entrepreneur. So who is an entrepreneur? What are the qualities of an entrepreneur? We are then looking at to familiarize yourself with the process of establishing an enterprise. Keep the word in mind, enterprise. So what is an enterprise? And then we'll, we shall do about learning about factors that contribute towards a successful enterprise. And last but not the least, we should also know about the importance of entrepreneurship in tourism. Okay, so now we need to understand how entrepreneurship is linked to tourism. To start with the first of all, I need like to bring in your mind to understand the thought process of the word entrepreneur. Have you ever thought to start your own business? Have you ever thought to be your own boss? Have you ever thought to start something new, to start something different? All these thoughts and processes relate one way or another to entrepreneurship. Now let's start with the first thing to understand the enterprise and I'm sure you have done it before just to reiterate. We are actually looking at SME, small and medium enterprise. But until very recently, the government of India in 2020 has brought up a new notification. In the new notification, there are micro, small and medium enterprise. Now, what is a micro enterprise? Now, a micro enterprise, as for the latest notification of the government, is an enterprise which has minimum investment of up to one crore. That means not exceeding one crore and at the turnover not exceeding five crores then comes a small enterprise now what is a small enterprise again the same category but the you know, plant and um, the investment plant and machinery and equipment should not be more than 10 crores and the turnover up to 50 crores and last but not the least which is medium enterprise and of course the investment in the plant machinery equipment should not be more than 50 crores and the turnover up to 250 crores. Now, that means what is the, I'm talking about? All these MSME enterprises or business houses or um, a, a, a businesses that are investing at the uh, what's called turnovers and investments ranging from anything above one up to 50 crores of investment and the turnover up to 250 crores. Now, why this um, sector is, you know, recalled again? Why are we thinking about this sector? Do you know this MSME or small and medium enterprise, which is micro small and medium enterprise, they actually are the new job opportunities creators. Yes, they do create new job opportunities. Okay. Now, the Ministry of Micro, Small and Medium Enterprise, they actually are working towards supporting these enterprises and tourism is no change. Tourism is also part of it and tourism also comes under small and medium enterprise. Now, then comes, there's a very good recognition of SMEs, um, which is increasing day by day. Yes, it is increasing because small and medium enterprise, they really play a major role in the developing countries. Yes, the economies are really depend on these small and medium enterprises and they actually also, you know, are, are very much supportive or contributors to the global economic development. Hmm. And they actually represent about 90% of businesses around the world and more than 50% of the employment worldwide. The formal um, SMEs, which is called small and medium enterprise, they contribute up to 40% of national income in many emerging economies. So what do we learn from all this? We learn that small and medium enterprise, they really play a bigger role 
into the development of economies around the world. So now we need to understand what is an entrepreneur. Yes, we need to understand what is an entrepreneur. So the definition by AICTE, which is a government of India organization, is that an entrepreneur is a person who has a possession of um, a new enterprise. When you talk, talk about new enterprise, that means you have a new idea. You actually are looking at bringing something new. Well, when you bring something new in the market, any product or a service or a new idea, you think people believe in you or you think that idea really starts implementing? Not really. That means an entrepreneur is a person who has very, very focused goal, who knows what he or she wants to do. Okay. Which means that they could be no, they could be negative, they could be failures. Yes, certainly. So the entrepreneur is a person who is ready to face those failures. So the term actually, the entrepreneur, the term actually was um, taken from a French and it was defined by Irish French economist called Richard Cantillon. Now, it is actually coming up from there that we have picked up this term and it's actually become very much vocal in the 19th century. And someone who takes um, an enterprise or a business and acts as a, it was a mediator or an intermediary between a labor and the capital. So this was the previous one, but now, what are we looking at an entrepreneur? Entrepreneur is a person who actually introduces new product or a service. As we said in one of our objectives that we are going to link this tourism, right? So, number one, there should be new product or service that should be you know, launched or introduced in terms of by an entrepreneur or and there must be something different there must be something innovative so there's something in this business that's something different now when you talk about different i don't know, understand i'll give you one a very good example here now we all know the hotels right we all know in the hospitality industry the hotels the various hotels are there now these hotels they have customers coming to them they stay they book the hotel you know you, you pay the money and either and then you go there you stay there there's a booking and then you uh, enjoy your stay and you come back now that is a normal way right what happened there's something called airbnb right you know airbnb what did airbnb do they changed the whole system now here they use something called shared economy now what is a shared economy they used the accommodation which was already present in the market. What accommodation are we talking about? Yes, we're talking about accommodation which was available in the market. That means the houses of people. Accommodation. I was having my flat in the city, same very close to the hotel, but my flat is empty. So they used those flats and accommodation from the local people and asked guests to go and stay over there. So now Airbnb was a new idea. They were giving accommodation in the same city where the five star hotel is, but a bigger accommodation with the kitchen, but from the owner rather than hotel and at a cheaper price. When the hotels are going book, fully booked, you still want to go in the city, you can still go by using Airbnb. That's an idea that was exactly an example of an entrepreneur and this is something that you will give you a relation to what exactly I was trying to tell you. Now let's move on further and to understand. So understand what are, could be the qualities uh, you know, that a, a, an entrepreneur may have. So let's look at the qualities. So there are a few things very, very interesting that you know entrepreneurs do and they have. Number one, entrepreneurs are really, really very much focused. Yes. They want to be their own bosses, number one. Number two, there's a few qualities which I'll pick up one by one. The first one is that they welcome failures. You heard me right. They welcome failures. They are ready, they're stubborn. They welcome failures. That means then you take a risk in life. For anything, there's a chance of failure, right? So they are risk takers. Now, when they, they take a risk, they take risk in a calculated way. 
When you talk about calculated way, what is a calculated way? That means before jumping in, they will do the calculations. If I jump in, what could be positive and what could be negative? What could be the consequences and if I'm successful and what could be the consequences if I'm not successful or if there's a failure? So there's a calculated risk that they take and they say, okay, but they have something in their mind they call optimistic, they're positive, they're hoping for success. Yes, I know there's a risk of failure, but there's a possibility of success too. And they take the risk and they go. So what happens is in their mind, they have a very positive hope of achieving things, right? And when you have a positive hope of achieving things, you really, really do not worry much about the failures. You do not worry about the hurdles that come in the way. You know what is the hurdles? Hurdles is any obstruction that come in the way. So you are not afraid of those obstacles. So these people, this is one of the qualities that they are risk taking and they are not uh, afraid of failure. Rather, what happens is these obstacles is like a feedback. Obstacles are like a feedback and they help to situ analyze the situation, to understand the situation and develop self-confidence. So that's a very first criteria in terms of an entrepreneur. Let's take the next criteria to evaluate rather to constantly self-evaluate, to check on you. Am I doing the right thing? Is my process right? Is my decision making right? Everything. So what do you do? You always check and you evaluate your decisions, your actions so that you're always on track. You're very much attentive. You're very much um, positive, hoping, but at the same time, you're looking at what am I doing? So in terms of self-evaluation, so you say, okay, fair enough. Do I have the confidence to take the risk? Hmm. Now, the good thing in the self-evaluation is you evaluate, you find mistakes, you work on your mistakes. Okay. Now, how can the only and only objective is to have a success, right? Now, if you have that as an objective, all other things, they do not look big. All other obstacles do not look big. So you work on that. Now, if you remember, or if you, well, at the moment, you you might be, I don't know what situation would be. You could be in, in your department, you could be somewhere, but wherever you are, if you're working or if you're studying or if you're planning to, you know, every day you get yourself ready and go to work, right? But here, your work is 24 seven because it's all here. You always ignition of fire is there in you all the times, isn't it? So the questions that could come in terms of self-evaluation is, can I take a risk? Can I see a new opportunity and a business opportunity coming in this decision? What if I take initiative and move ahead and take first step? Should I take risk or not? Can I bring that money and resources to get this work done? Can I ask people to join me and get this work done? Okay, now, can I plan those things? So you are already checking all those things in you. Can I implement? And can I pursue those things for a long time? So all those questions come to your mind. So you're analyzing all the times what about decisions you are taking, what are actions you are taking before doing these actions, you are analyzing your actions. Not only that, the very, very important aspect is called initiative. Okay, what is the initiative? Okay. Internal fire to do something rather than someone telling you. No one should be able to tell you what you should do. You know what you do because you really want to achieve your dreams. You want to make your dreams into reality. You want, want to make your dream as in your business or your enterprise as an operation. You want to let it go and run, isn't it? So you're not waiting for anyone's instructions or directions. So that's something which is called initiative. And this is very much common. Uh, one of the traits in person called entrepreneur. Yes, entrepreneurs has those things they have built in. And they're very strongly built in them. And that's a fire as I was using this word earlier. Now. To take a decision or to do any action, the very important aspect that comes is called information. Yes, it is information. So what is information? So information is that whatever you, you know, you're going to take action or decision or launching a product or a service, 
you need to know your customers. You need to know the trends. You need to know what's going on in the market. You need to know what are the likes and dislikes. There's so many things that you need to know. But where do you get this information? That's exactly right. So, information seeking. That means you must be up to date with the latest information in the industry, trends in the market. You must also know that where do we get this information from? What are the different resources that I can get this information? And obviously, you must always look at your competitors. You must know what are the products of your competitors. What is something very good for your strengths as compared to others, as compared to your competitors? So you do an analysis called SWOT analysis. So it's strength, weakness, S for strength, W for weakness, O for opportunities, T for threats. So what are the strengths that I have over others? What is my weakness as compared to others? What are my opportunities that I can take one and move on and take a new step or whatnot? And what are threats um, depending upon what's going on in the market and whatnot? No. So how do you get this information? Where do you get this information? Number one, you should have enough resources that help you to get this information, right? Number two, why don't you go? Nowadays, there's an internet. You can do the personal research. You must, at this stage, be connected with a lot of connection that you must have. Not only that, now you should be having a, uh, you can say, uh, connected to a lot of organizations. Um, we have business organizations. We have a lot of business networks that you can be a part of. Uh, there's many forums here you can be for, part of. So there are many government organizations being very part of. So all those give you, um, you know, a lot of information. There are many experts who charge money though, but they give you, you know, a lot of information that is required and that's necessary for you as an entrepreneur. Now, got it. Um, I've got initiative. I'm getting information. Now, but the thing is, I'm, I'm not, you know, afraid of failures. The important thing that we must understand and acknowledge over here is that an entrepreneur must be ready to face problems and to solve problems. A business runs on the one basic thing is to provide a solution. Yes, to provide a solution, that is how a business runs. Any business here is there because they want to provide a solution for a problem. And that's exactly one basic, very, very important trait uh, entrepreneur must have is to have a problem solving attitude. Now, keep in mind that there will be problems. For sure, there will be problems and you're there to solve the problems. And that's why you're there in the market, right? Now, not only solve the problem, you must have, you know, there's some problems which are bigger or some are smaller, regardless. You should have the confidence developed in you. Yes, I can solve. I'm ready to solve the problems whenever it comes. How will you bring the resources? That's another thing. You must have those connections and networks and planning in your mind. Now, the good part is that you must accept problems as normal. It is day to day. It's okay. It's okay to have problems. So, when you have a problem, at that point of time, you must be able to keep yourself calm. Number one. Number two, you must have the right strategies to be put in place. Okay, if there is a problem, what can I do? And who, whom can I get help from? What resources will I need if I need? How will I get those resources? So all those things, actually, you need to make you know, planning in your mind and you should be able to execute and implement those things. Now, at times, you may have to take risk while taking those decisions, right? Which is normal. And those uh, risks uh, which that you take may, uh, the decision that you take may have a bigger risk involved. And that may be good or bad, you know. It may be that uh, the, you know, the decision that you're taking involves risk and there may be a, a, an element. But having said that, as previously told you, it's okay, they must be able to take risk. Now, when we Come to the next right, which is um, quality assurance and monitoring. So always remember, when you're bringing something new to the market or you're doing any business, always remember it's a very, very imperative aspect or a factor that you must have a quality and sustained quality. That means if you give a product, 
for example if there's a mobile this mobile must be same from a to b to b to c if you're having a one model of mobile all the mobile models should be same if a chef is making a dish his dish must be same taste and flavor and color and whatnot now i know there could be some variations so that is where you have to see on monitor what is monitoring that you see if everything which i have planned in the very first place is working the same way or not so that's called monitoring so you must be doing the monitoring in terms of whatever your quality you has just started with or you know if you want to improve why not but try not to go down and make sure it's following the standards requirements and why not okay now at times um you know you start alone but you have people and team going with you so you need to actually influence others to follow what your dream is isn't it that's become a bit more challenging but that's what entrepreneurs are here for and that is why new startups come and they do get successful and then they have a team joining them now these are the qualities which i was telling you and explaining you about an entrepreneur and we need to understand what is the process which is called entrepreneurial process so what is an entrepreneurial process uh, that needs to be followed or what are the different um you know functions that we need to understand so let's understand the entrepreneurial process so what exactly happens is that um when we want to set up a new venture or a new business there are a few other aspects other than you yes other than you have wish to do well you need to do that or what i qualities at all you need to have or develop those qualities in you before you just want to start a business but there are other qualities too isn't it so you're not going to start a business just for yourself you need to have uh, to understanding of market you need to see what are the rates or you need to see what are the policies there are a lot of many things that you need to understand and see before you set up a new venture right now so in the function both um, individual as well as environment are very very important as i said before it is not just you so it's an environment where you'll be working are you working in the family are you working in a corporate house are you working in a community center so where are you working which is your area of work so to make it simple um so let's say if a person is a qualified let's say he's got skills okay he's a chef right so he actually as a chef and uh, you know he can make new dishes all right but now but he is actually placed in this uh, place or he is in a situ- in in a in a place where we do not have much people coming he is a very far from area there's less connectivity of people going and visiting his um, house or restaurant or wherever he wants to open his you know set up a joint if he opens a set up a joint where there's no road connectivity how many customers will he be getting right number 2 if he opened in a area which is now into a war zone hmm obviously no tourist is going to come in the war zone isn't it so environment is very very important that's what i was trying to explain you how environment is very important even though person you have the skill right now this is something which we really need to work on and understand that in an entrepreneurship what are the different things that are required so there are four factors which are called the four c's theory of entrepreneurship i will include those four factors to make it more elaborate and make you understand so let's come and i have a look at those four characteristics or the traits um you know that's the first thing which comes under four c's theory of entrepreneurship the first thing we call characteristics or uh what is it called um, psychological traits so so what is the psychology or thought process of, of a entrepreneur so number one is passion which we you know passion is you really have fire to do something in you you really want to have uh you know it's not that you want to really create something just for money you want to make your name you want to give something new you want to create something new that's something it's called passion number two is very important called resilience what is resilience okay resilience is that having the capacity to come up again once you fall down yes if you fall down from there you have the capacity to come up and stand up and start working and start to work and improve yourself now that's called resilience 
then comes strong sense of self. What is strong sense of self? It means that um, you know you trust yourself and you have the feeling you understand yourself better and you start working on your instincts and gut feeling and start working and mobilizing people. And then comes flexibility well. Flexibility is very, very important in terms of being an entrepreneur because things don't come in place. There are a lot of issues, a lot of issues, but you still need to maintain your deadlines. You still need to work extra hours to make sure you fulfill your commitment to your business, to your enterprise. And it's very important aspect is called vision. So vision is long term prospective thinking. What do you think in the long term that you want to do with your business? How can you grow your business? Okay, that is the first thing which comes in place, and that's what is called characteristics. The second aspect of C is called competencies. You know, as the name says, competence, which is skills. What are the skills required um, to be an entrepreneur the, in the process of entrepreneurship? The skills are personal competencies, competencies that mean competency in a person that you are running the show, and which are creativity, determination, integrity, um, emotional balance self-criticism, all those that comes in personal, that in the person. Then comes interpersonal. That means I know all those things in me. I want to do a business. I'm very strong. I can take risk. I can take decisions. Now comes how are you able to communicate with others? That means interpersonal skills. Are you able to tell others what your thoughts are? Are you able to influence others? Are you able to convince others? Uh, so what exactly? That, that communication skills are required between what you have and how can you bring it across to others that are called interpersonal competencies and then comes the business competencies when it comes to business competencies we're talking about the vision of the business long-term perspective um, the resources how do you manage the resources what are the different resources that you need to manage in terms of um, you know and, and as a business then comes um, how much connections you have networking which is very, very important skills because always remember at times one phone call is more important or more valuable than maybe thousand dollars, which means or um, hundreds of 50,000 rupees. Sorry for my method. So what I'm trying to say is sometimes a person, even if you may have 50,000 rupees, you may not be able to get this work done as you one phone call, you know, the right person, right time can do the thing for you. Okay. And when very last and important things in terms of business competency is called negotiating skills. So what is negotiation? That means, let's say if I, if I want to sell this mobile and I give the qualities of this mobile, I want to sell this mobile. I want to sell this mobile at, let's say, um, 2000 rupees. Now, I know this mobile as being sold as 2000 rupees. Now this mobile selling at 2000 rupees is actually very, very important mm. to be sold as 2000 rupees mobile. But having said that, would you be able to sell this for 2000 rupees? <laughs> then other person says, no, I want to buy 1000 rupees. There's a negotiating. How can you make the other person convinced that this is the quality this mobile has? And because of this quality, this is 2000 rupees and not 1000 rupees. So that's called negotiation skills. And the next part that comes is very, very important. It's called the condition. As I was telling you before, the environment, where exactly are you doing your business? What is the conditions? What, what are the circumstances that are affecting uh, the life of a person or affecting your personal life or affecting the environment that really makes you tough for you to do the business or it is supportive of you? Because what happens is that, um, you know, there are many aspects and factors in a business, the many ups and downs, especially when you're starting a new business or a new venture. So there could be many people, many organizations that need the help. Are they supporting you? Is government policy supporting you? Are you able to get the finance? Are all you dependent on someone else to support you? And are these factors supporting you to run the show? Or maybe um, these factors are negatively impacting you how are you able to solve the, um, you know, the issues that are coming in the way? Because as I said, for an entrepreneur, problems are okay and normal. So you have to come up and find a solution to problems. And the fourth and the last factor that comes is context, uh, which we discuss as environmental factors. Okay. So what are the various factors that impact your business? 
Now, you may always remember that you know when you have a business or you're starting an idea or getting a um, money or getting an idea, this is not enough to run the show, isn't? You must be ready to accept um, the challenges and keep uh, persistently, you know, pushing. This is what I want, and this is what is my idea, and this is what is going to impact and how is going to make a difference. And when you have this persuasion um, or persistence to make sure that um, you want to bring up your idea into the market, aware of the environment factors that what is happening in the industry, in the family, in the business, um, in uh, right now the COVID situation is there. Like, yeah. So if you have to start at business right now, what business can you bring up? How is government supporting you? How much money would you require? That is something we need to understand the, um, you know, the culture, uh, the access to money, are the bank able to, you know, banks able to support you for financing your business? Is government policies there to support you? Um, you know, can you bring people to work for you at this stage? And what are the government policies? Um, is it is it because of COVID? Uh, you know, you're not able to open your business. So all those factors must be considered, and that they actually come in your environment. Thank you. Now, we have economic factors. Um, we have um, social factors. Uh, economic factors is money. Social factors are how are the people, you know, the society going to behave and interact in terms of when you do a, you know, start your invent your venture or a business. Now, now, there is very very important thing that we must be always aware of and cautious of that is the uh, social factors which means we should always take into account the customs the cultural values the family environment because taking aside the government rules and regulations taking aside the the factors of the business this is very important factor because these factors help us uh, in terms of taking decisions these factors actually really, really impact us in, um, you know, uh, making sure that we are growing and which direction do we go, what decisions do we take and who all to be involved. So on this account, I would like to tell you, let's go back and reiterate what did we learn today. And I would like to close that first session here. In our first session, what we understood today is the first thing, MSME, that we understood what are micro small and medium enterprise which is in 2020 which have changed the definition then how this medium as medium small msme they impact um you know the economy how do they impact and bring new job opportunities then we actually discussed or we understood who's an entrepreneur we understood what are the different qualities of an entrepreneur you know as compared to a normal person or a normal business um, you know, such as risk taking or self evaluation. We spoke about um, initiative taking. We spoke about um, information seeking. How do they get the information? We also spoke about problem solving and quality assurance. Then we went on to the understanding the entrepreneurial process, which where which includes that it is not only just you as an individual and your internal thought processes that is required. You now there's something more beyond what you are which is called environment and which are external factors we, we spoke about four c's of entrepreneurship and which is such as characteristics uh, we had competence we had condition and we had context so all those factors are helping us to understand the process of entrepreneurship in our next session we shall take further and we should understand further the process of entrepreneurship i would like to thank you now for this session and we'd like to um, maybe see you very soon for the next session. Thank you so much and have a good day. Bye.